So when it rains, it pours. Um, sometimes things come out that you don't expect. And when it rains and it pours and you're 48 and suddenly you're trying on your voice again um, and you're rationalizing with your eight-year-old self that's still inside that was scared to raise my hand in class or scared to speak uh, or scared to actually say what I thought. And so this wrestle is going on between my 48-year-old self and my eight-year-old self and we see who won. Um, <laughs> so here we go. Where's my story? So when it rains and pours and you're 48, you go back 20 years to 1997, and that's the year that in March of 97, I got married to my husband, Scott. And in September of 1997, we left for Kenya, and we were uh, the United States Peace Corps volunteers, quite proudly, leaving for Kenya. Um, I had gone on a solo trip before, and that was to China some years before I met my husband, and I lived in China, and it was the first thing I did out of college. <laughs> I graduated and had gone to China and Japan and Taiwan as a senior in college and came home and thought, I'm going to go back, and didn't know Chinese and went and taught and learned for a year, and um, it was very empowering, and this was 20 years ago in China. It's a different China than it is today, for sure. Um, but I felt kind of protected and strong as a woman, and it was, it was empowering. So leaving to go to Kenya with my husband, I thought, well, you know, I could do this. I got this. This is good. So, so when it rains and pours and you go to Kenya six months after you get married, and you find yourself on a bus. You've just arrived in Nairobi, and now you're being driven to Naivasha, where you're going to live for three months with a new family and learn and train as a volunteer and learn things that you need to know about surviving and living in Kenya. And the first three things they told us on the bus before we actually arrived at the training center was one, if you're on a bus or you're out in the world and someone steals your hat or your backpack or your wallet, don't yell thief and don't yell wheezy because everyone will exactly know what you're talking about. And if you yell thief, you need to be prepared to see a mob form and attack the thief, mob justice. This is the first thing they're telling us on the bus, and I'm listening. And then the second thing they tell you on the bus before they let you off is some, if something does happen to you or your person, um, don't call the cops, don't go to the cops, because they will ask you for a bribe and you will be expected to pay the bribe, and if you don't pay the bribe, well, one, nothing will happen, and if you do pay the bribe, two, nothing will happen. <laughs> Maybe someone will hear your story, but it's not gonna get you anywhere. And so you start to realize, oh, well, there's the effects of oppression on people and in a place and on a society, and this is, again, still not even arriving at our first destination. And then the other thing they told us on the bus is uh, don't be out after dark. So those of us who are women who are kind of, we're familiar with the analogy, you're wearing the pinning skirt, you deserved it. So maybe it's a new message for some of the guys, but I feel like the women kind of understood. And it's the idea that after dark, things are a little bit different. And if you're out after dark, you may find yourself in a situation where you don't want to be in. So I'm listening to these things. And those aren't the stories I'm gonna to tell tonight. I can tell you the mob justice story later. But that's not the one we're talking about tonight. So, fast forward through the end of our first year at our site, and we're in rural Nandy Village, San Galo Secondary School. There's 100 kids. They're very excited to meet us, and we're being introduced to the student body, and the headmaster, in his big booming voice, says, we are here to welcome our couple. We are here to welcome the man first. Scott McBride, welcome to San Carlos Secondary School. And with that, he instructs the audience to give him the traditional San Galo four claps. So join me. We'll clap for Scott. One, two, three, four. And then he turns to me, and the students are all lined up in their outfits, listening quietly. And he turns to me and he says, and we have Miss Susan. And for the woman, we give our three. One, two, three. So my face betrays me, and some of the girls sit there. They see, they laugh, and I think, I'm not supposed to do that right now. I'm sure I'm supposed to just keep it all in. 
But anyway, it kind of bugs me. Kind of like the Trump pussy grabbing comment, that really bothered me too. <laughs> so we go through our first school year, it's the end of the term. We're in a boarding school. These kids haven't seen their parents from January to November. It's the last night. It's closing ceremonies. Everyone's excited. There's 100 kids packed into a tiny room, sitting on chairs, on desks, on each other. They can't wait. It's closing ceremonies. And in closing ceremonies, each form, same as grade level, four forms. Form one, freshmen, form two, sophomores. You get the idea. So what happens is the form one teacher is going to announce grades and marks. And the top three students and the bottom three students get introduced. I'm having an internal panic attack because I am the form three lead teacher. And suddenly I realize I need to step up, wrestle with my eight-year-old scared shy voice, and announce the top and the bottom three students. And I can't. I can't announce the bottom three students. But it's my turn. So, Richard Bercire is number three. I just decided spontaneously when the voice comes out and the rain starts falling, and suddenly I'm deciding no announcement is to be made for the last three, the bottom three students. So Richard Bercire is a boy, and he's number three, top third, and I announce him with our four claps. One, two, three. Four. The next student, I realize, is a girl. And the number one student is a boy. And out of nowhere, I command the room to give this girl four claps. Felister, Jeff Tanway, second student, four claps, please. One, two, three, four. The room is silent. I announce the number one student. He gets his four claps and we move on. At the end of the closing ceremony, Mr. Kogo, young Mr. Kogo in his 20s, a little bit more open-minded perhaps, steps up and his voice is shaking. And he's going to announce the head girl of the student body, Sally Chibet. And he says, and because of Miss Susan and her feminism, we are going to give this girl four claps. <laughs> Sally Chabet. One, two, three, four. And with that, there's a monsoon inside my heart. And I hope that your voice and your monsoon takes over in this time where we need our voices to matter.